Hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are blessed. I come from a family of five boys. I have two older brothers, two younger brothers, and I am in the middle. And if you know anything about middle children, uh, they can suffer in so many different ways. Kind of, it, was a, it was a lonely life in some ways. See, I was too young to play with my two older brothers and hang out with them, but I was also too old to hang out and play with my uh, younger brothers. And so you live this life often just of loneliness. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about this, is that if you had met my mother, if you met my mother, my mother was fierce in her love of us. Oh my goodness, if you were outside of our family and you said something about us, you did something to any of the five of us, my mum was there and she was ferocious, literally in the way she cared for us. In her eyes, we did nothing wrong. Uh, even though when we were growing up, it didn't feel that way. I remember when mum got older, a little time before she died, in the final years of her life, and we were older and had left home all of us going off to our various own families and life as it goes. Uh, mum would often talk about us when we were younger. And mum would talk about the fact that life was fantastic and the five of us were so good. Apparently we never fought, we never argued about anything, we never competed at all. And mum would say to us that we were the perfect children uh, when, she was, when she was older. But all of us have often smiled and laughed a bit because when we think back to when we were kids, five young boys, teenagers, living in a home, there was enough testosterone going around, there was competition, there was disagreement, there was, uh, uh, there were, there was times when we just didn't get on for various reasons. And, and, uh, but mum, she never saw that. Mum doesn't remember it even. To mum, we were perfect. And when we think about God and we think about love, uh, I often think about mum. Mum who had this, this, this view that somehow we, we were these perfect kids that she had. And yet we all knew that that was just not the truth. Um, God, when we talk about love, in some sense, I often think to myself, gee, God's love, I'm told, is so much more than my mother's. But I, I struggle to even comprehend that. But that's what the scripture tells us. If you have a look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, have a look at this on the screen. It says this, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to all the measure, uh, to the measure of all the fullness of God again. I pray that you being rooted and established in love. And what does it mean to be rooted and established in love? We were made by God and God, God has made us to know him, to love him and to be in a relationship with him. That we are established in that plan. Uh, that is his way. And that we, it says that we would have the power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. That, you know, how high and deep and uh, uh, the, is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. To know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. To know this love that surpasses knowledge. In other words, love is beyond knowledge when it truly works. Love, yes, we can understand it, but love is something that we experience. And when we experience the fullness and the totality of love, the way it's meant to work, it does fill us with this sense of being full. For many of us, sadly, we don't have that sense of the love of God in our life such that we experience the fullness of God, but it's achievable and attainable. And, and for so many of us, we do what I do. When I think of love, I think of my mother. We think of human love. And for as much as my mum was magnificent, and she was, and loved us deeply, God's love is so far beyond. There's nothing, nothing, nothing that can measure the love of God. And so when I look at my mother's love, I look at my mother who sacrificed so much. 
I remember when we first, uh, first came to the country where we live, um, I remember in those early days, mum and dad didn't have much. And I remember mum didn't even wear shoes for a period of time. She had some very old shoes. I still remember it as a very little boy because mum and dad gave us everything in order that we would be happy uh, and, and, and have what we need. And when I think of God and I think that, that love is beyond even that, it, it, it blows my mind. The love of God is pure acceptance of us. My mum knew, mum knew that, that there was so much wrong that each of us engaged in in our life from time to time. Mum knew. And somehow she had a way of looking past it. And it's the same with God, that no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what we've done, no matter where we are going, no matter how we've failed, no matter how we've pulled up short, no matter how well we do at things, God's love is pure. Mum didn't love us any more when we were naughty, so to speak, than when we were good. Mum loved. And yet God's love is even beyond that. God's love is even beyond that. Uh, and so how, how is this love? How are we meant to encounter the love of God? Because you meet people, we've all heard of them, people who encounter the love of God in their life and it transforms their thinking, it transforms their way of seeing life and you only have to see someone who has had a physical encounter with God, an emotional encounter with God, a spiritual encounter with God, their whole face is different. Their personality is different. Certainly when I encountered God for the first time in my life, it changed me. It was real and it touched me. And, 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 and how do we experience the love of God? The funny, funny thing is that I've discovered that we experience the love of God by surrendering to the love of God, or more accurately, surrendering to God and saying to God, God, here is me. Here is my life. I want you. I remember, I remember being 13 years old and I was standing, uh, I was standing in a kindergarten and a Catholic priest walked up to me and he said to me, he said, Bruce, do you want to give your life to God? Do you want to know the love of God? He said, because you could do it right now. And I remember being 13 and going, what? And, he, and, 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 and I'd heard a few talks about giving your life to God. And he said, well, let me, let me pray for you. And, he, and, he, and he, he said, can I pray for you? And let me lead you in a prayer that you need to say sincerely. And he said this prayer, Lord God, I come before you. I ask your forgiveness for those areas in my life where I haven't lived up to the person you call me to be. And, and, and I thank you that you forgive me and I'm going to do my best. And God, right now I come before you and I give you the totality of my life. Lead me where you will and how you will. Lord, I accept you into my life. And I, and I, can, I, I remember it vividly all these years on, something as he prayed changed in me and it was like, <gasps> encountering this love, this pure acceptance that me who was limited, me who was not perfect, that there was, a, there was this being of love, this encounter with, with God that surpassed knowledge. It wasn't just that I'd, you know, I'd, I'd gone to school, I'd gone to religious classes, I'd gone to church. No, 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 it was, it was an encounter that was beyond See, if, we, if, if you come before God as you are and you lay your life down before God and say, God, here I am I, even if you're not sure, God will come to you. I remember that day as that priest led the prayer to me, I remember saying to God, God, I don't even know if I believe, but I give you my life. I give you my life and it's changed everything. And I'm here today because of that moment in my life. So how do we encounter the love of God? Well, sincerity is the key. God loves sincerity. Tell God how you feel. I don't feel close to you. I feel far away from you. I'm not sure if this is all real. I'm going to give it just a test. And then come and acknowledge God. God, but I, but I believe, I believe, I'm trying to believe that you made everything and you hold everything in the palm of your hand. And then, and then secondly, is to say to God, God, I ask your forgiveness for those areas of my life where I fall short and you all know what they are. Are you the person that you thought you would be years ago? Is every decision, everything that comes out of your mouth the right thing to do, the right thing to say? 
No, they're not. You know. Uh, are you that man, that woman that you believe that we're going to be? And yes, circumstances can knock us off. But sometimes we allow ourselves to, through our choices and through things we do, to not end up being that person. Uh, is, is come before God and ask his forgiveness. Knowing that immediately God forgives us. Immediately God forgives us. So that there's no barrier between us and God. And then come to God and surrender your life to God. Say, God, may I encounter you. May I experience your love. May I know your love in my life. May I know that love. Lord, I give you my life. And, and, it's, it, it, and you're effectively making an invitation to God to lead. Love is something, God's love is something that we can, in, we can know that surpasses knowledge. What does it say in that scripture? Uh, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and how deep and is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Why? So that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. When we come before God and we say, God, I believe you exist to the best I can. I ask your forgiveness. I surrender my life to you. Come and be with me. Show me your love. You can sit and expect to encounter God. You can do that today, no matter where you are. And, and God will come to you in a deeper way. And through my life, I've said that prayer many, many, many times, gone through those things. Acknowledged God, asked his forgiveness, surrendered my life to him and invited him to lead my life. And it's changed me. If you understand the love of God, you'll never see life, nor anyone you know or love ever the same. Loving Father, we thank you today that you're with us. I thank you, Lord God, that you know us and care for us and that you are with us in all things. Allow us to encounter your love right where we are right now. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Two final things as we conclude. If you need prayer wherever you are around the world, why don't you write to me? Just go to the prayer tab right now and I'll stand with you and I'll pray that God would work fantastically in your situation or in the situation of those you love. And finally, I just want to encourage you so that we can keep going, continue to keep serving in this way. Hey, remember us somewhere in your budget. Keep us somewhere between your electricity bill and your food bill. And just a little often helps us to proclaim the gospel to people all over the world and hopefully introduce them to the love of God. God bless you all, everybody. See you next time.